Hello and welcome to Granite RC. Now today I have been asked, well, a couple of days ago, sorry, uh, I was asked a question, um, how do I make my racks and pallets? Now, uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, I've made a couple of different sizes of pallets actually and a couple of sizes of racks um, first kind of experimenting really with uh, a copy of the original Carson parts which came with the Lindy forklift um, and simply the, uh, the racks the first run was a little bit taller um, and the second run a little bit shorter but a little bit wider as well um, I found that this was a, a better size for for my purposes, um, but that does work being a little bit taller. But, uh, you've got more chance of of maxing out the uh, the forklift itself. But anyway, I'll get rid of that one because I won't be using that. For the ones which I'll mainly be using, it's going to be. Uh, these smaller ones, which I've already made three of. Now, height-wise, I don't know if you can see there, but we're looking about the eight inches, or just over twenty centimeters. So it's twenty, I think, about twenty-five or twenty point four sort of territory. They don't need to be overly accurate in general. Um, the overall length is at about ten and a half inches, so it's about twenty six point seven, twenty six point six uh, centimeters. The inside measurement is about nine and a half inches, so that's about twenty four point. 124.2 centimeters, roughly there. So that's the general dimensions there. But I'll give you the heights of what I've done at the side here as well, which is, if you can see there, little blocks inside, a space apart as well, um, as the uh, the racks which I've already given you the size four and nine and a half inches on there. It's just easier to work in inches because I used strips of one inch wood. Uh, I think this is about a half inch. What was that? Uh, Twelve mil ply. Um, it was gifted by a friend who was cleaning out his garage and uh, I got my dad to cut them into one inch strips on his table saw. So that's the wood that I'm using and it's, it's all the same for the racks. It's all one inch uh, pieces cut into various sizes. So, as like I said, the other dimensions that we're kind of looking at is where I'm setting pieces in. Um, so for the small blocks which will sit under the racks themselves. The top of them is one inch high, so it's about two and a half centimeters. And uh, they're put on on the side, but I'll show it all getting assembled once I've built my other one. Um, and the uh, the racks are just set on top. So as I said, they're about a half inch above, so at one and a half inches from the ground is my first rail there. This next one the top is set to six inches of my little uh, resting block, so six inches around 15 15 point three centimeters roughly. And again the the rack is put on top there so it will come to about six and a half inches as my second rack height at the top. Okay. So, as also mentioned, I have some spaces. 
and these are roughly one and three quarter inches or four just under four and a half, so about 4.3 centimeters roughly there and those are fixed in between my two side pieces so I've used this roughly as a template, once you've kind of cut out one you can mark everything up and we're going to need four side pieces so on this strip here I've managed to get three side pieces marked and there's a little bit of spare so what I've done is basically laid that on there instead of having to use the tape measure to, to measure everything and just marked the height with a pencil so I've done that for three sides on that strip there uh, one final side there and again just to make it easy I kind of cheated and marked the rack size by resting that in there and marking on top so again we need four rack pieces so two on that strip and final two on this strip with a bit of excess so I'll, uh, I'll try and figure out the sizes of total lengths at some point but uh, you are going to need quite a bit of wood to get this constructed um, I have seen other variations I think using um, either a small metal rod which are probably just going to be either a hole drilled in the side and fed through and glued but I kind of like the chunky wooden style about it um, looks like a stronger rack in general so anyway uh, so along with the four racks the four sides you need obviously four spaces as well and they were the, the two and a half inch roughly spaces there and also some little uh, resting blocks, you'll need eight of these I've made them about a centimetre squared uh, you could do like a half inch block or something like that um, and eight of those, two for each rack piece to sit on so the way I kind of designed this was for a full pallet to sit basically flush with the rack itself so there you go, you can see there's not really much space each side of that and uh, that fits on quite nicely one downside is the uh, the Carson sized ones, the Euro pallet sort of sized ones compared to the full pallet doesn't really sit on there nicely, it will fit but there's such a small overlap if you can see that properly as to how to fit it on, it's, it's quite a challenge to actually get these on the rack but if you want smaller ones that's going to save you a bit of material um, and you probably make more of the, the smaller ones versus the bigger ones with the wood that you get but I'll get into that in a second um, so yeah as I said I've got everything marked up there I already had some spare spaces for the sides and some spare blocks Although I've only sanded four, I do have uh, one, two, another few to slot from there. They're still a bit rough, so uh, you can just sand them a little bit flat there. And get rid of any uh, any splinters which might come out of it, just to tidy it up a little bit. But I've uh, basically done that for all the spaces. And, and once I get these cut out, I'll quickly just run over those, my little sanding pad there as well, just to take off any uh, 
anything that's going to splinter. But for assembling mats as well, you're probably going to need something like a glue gun. This is one of the cheapest I could find. Um, and some general purpose glue sticks. They should work fine for, for what we're doing here. It's not needing to hold massive amounts of weight, so it's not going to cause too much of an issue. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll go outside, uh, cut these space, uh, parts out, and we'll return when I'm getting everything put together. Okay, um, so I have all my pieces cut out now, and uh, and quickly finished off with the sander, uh, sander pad. The first thing we need to look at making, I'll just move some of these bits out of the way, is these sides. Um, these are straightforward and simple enough to do. And let's move that out so we've got a bit of space here. Don't need the spaces just yet. So, I've got my four side pieces there, they're all roughly the same height, there might be the odd mill out there, but uh, to be honest it's not going to make any difference to what we're going to be doing. Okay, so we had these four spaces up as well. And literally there, just going to go in, uh, and from what I remember is what, two and a half inch, no, sorry, yeah, one, one and three quarter inch spaces going in there. And again, these are one inch strips. And so overall it's going to be three and three quarter inches wide, there or thereabouts. Anyway, okay. Um, look, everything's set up there, so you don't really need to measure or do anything difficult for this bit. It's just get them roughly lined up. You can always go over at the ends with a sander or a sander pad or whatever to even things up if you really want. But this should work fine. Um, line them up and roughly make sure that they're. They're all kind of square and fit together quite nicely. You might need to change the odd spacer around just if it's not sitting well there, it might sit better down there or whatever, but uh, it's just a bit of a nicer bit, although it does lean a little bit, I think. To be honest, it doesn't really matter doing it by eyes, uh, can be good enough. Anyway, as I said earlier, you'll probably need a glue gun. Um, I'm literally just putting a little blob down one side of the spacer, lining it up at the bottom. And you might want to watch yourself there, just because it is hot glue. You've got a second maybe before it sets. See, so yeah, time to kind of wiggle it in. But we're just making these L shapes. One for the one side, which is going to be the bottom, and another one which is going to be the top. Okay. So, as I said, this should kind of set within a couple of seconds. And again, they line up pretty well. That's it there. Right. So, next stage is be reasonably obvious. We're going to glue the top and bottoms together. Just there. So I'll quickly throw the glue on. Not much there. Uh, Uh, 
Uwe Obel auf sein Unfall. That's okay, I can turn that side down at the end just to, to even it off. But, uh, I do like to quickly go in and just apply a little bit, if there's any little gaps in between the woods, just to, to give it a nice seal. Doesn't do too neat. I'm just trying to make it flush and again, if any spill out, this will kind of even it over so you've not got a big bulge of glue sitting there. quickly as well. So again, the glue on the bottom one and try and line it up as best you can. So again, that's fine for that one. One last bit for the top. down and set. A little bit of glue probably pressing out of it so you can tidy that up again with a knife or the glue gun as I've been doing as I go around. Okay, that should be okay to go. So again, it's on bottom and top. That one's a little bit more square, I think, than the other one, but as I said, it's not too bad. I might need to just sand them mill off there, just to even them up. But uh, I'll go around and tidy these up quickly and just, again fill in any gaps a little bit with glue, just for my own, uh, my own amusements. And then we'll get back and uh, through the rest of the assembly. Okay, right, I've got those tidied up close enough to good for me. Um, so the next bit we need to do is set our little blocks in. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was one inch is the top of the block there. So. I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on the side supports there. Um, I'll put in four marks just because it's going to be, well, one on each side so you can line it up properly there. Accuracy's not on the top of my list for doing this, to be honest, but um, you can take your time, obviously, and, and get everything properly squared off if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though. I do whatever works for me. So anyway, I'll take a, a straight edge and just line up the two marks there, uh, and it's basically at the top of where the one inch or one and three quarter inch by one inch spacer is. Uh, again, on this side. Because that's going to make it a lot easier to set things in once you've got everything marked. And the other one was set to six inches, so again, probably should have done this at the same time. But 
but uh, yeah. So we're getting six inches. I suppose it's uh, 15.2, 15.3. So the top one's in centimetres. I think about two and a half centimetres at the bottom for those marks. So that's both bits marked up now. We'll get our eight little uh, centimetre cubes, or there or thereabouts. Was it like three quarters? No, quarter of an inch, three quarters, half inch, about a half inch square, or the centimetre square, roughly. And we'll just get these attached again with the hot glue to our marks and again these are the top line of our blocks so again watch out for the hot glue but uh, attach your block just to the top line there if you can see and go ahead you want to do that with uh, with all eight and get them ready and in position. So it doesn't take too long once you've actually got everything cut up and sanded down, it's, it's the cutting and sanding which takes most time, so it's probably taken me 40 minutes an hour to get everything cut, sanded, marked out, maybe a little bit longer, maybe an hour, an hour and a half almost, <laughs> but, uh, I've not been rushing it or anything, I've just been taking my time. Okay, so that's one side complete there. We'll move on to this one and get this sorted. So again, you don't have to use these heights. You can figure out a height which you want to work with and, and alter designs to, to suit your needs, really. Uh, I found this was uh, the height for me after experimenting first with the tool rack. Uh, I just wanted a little bit more, more spength, uh, spength, space lengthways, and uh, a little bit less height, just so it's not uh, not going to be maxing out or having much of a chance of maxing out the the forklift. Don't really want to wear the uh, the parts out in that. Okay. So that's all eight pieces set in there. Um, you might want to check there might be some some glue which. Although not much has kind of spilled out a little bit into the into the top part of the section. Um, I don't know if so. There we go. Although I said accuracy is not uh, accuracy is not one hundred percent necessary for this. It's just easier not to have things getting in the way because it can through. Uh, through the shape out a little bit again. 
So just go in with a knife and etch out some excess if it spills on top of the block. So go through, do each one, and then we're ready for the next section, which is going to be attaching our racks themselves. Um, this one, no, that's all good. Okay. <coughs> so next will be simple enough. We have our four rack segments. Um, it's probably more important that these are closer to to each other in length than the, the side supports. I mean, if the, the top hangs off a little bit, like it does there, that's not going to cause any issue. But these being massively out of line, like I said they're not too bad, there may be a, a mill off here and there. But uh, it's not going to affect it too much. So, you can, if you want, to kind of mock it up just to see how it will look beforehand and see if it will be right for you with those sizes. Before going too far, you can make it certainly smaller, but you wouldn't want to necessarily make it any bigger. <laughs> I haven't cut everything. Um, See where I'm going to be going with this. Uh, I'm going to put one more on top just to kind of make it a little bit more stable for me to work on. sections down here now. Uh, it helps if that doesn't happen, but it's it still hurts anyway. Okay. So we've got one glued in place. And I'll quickly just mop it up to make sure everything else is going to fit in quite happily there. If you're careful, you can get it to balance and check each piece as it goes beforehand. But uh, that's going to work for me. And now that's kind of secured it in, I can go ahead quite haphazardly and get the rest glued into position. You don't have to use a glue gun, it's just for simplicity, I think it's the way to go with this. Um, otherwise, you'd be there for days with wood glue trying to pin this in shape. Um, but I guess there's nothing to stop you using panel pins instead of glue. And there we go, that's one pallet rack. Right pretty sturdy, I'll, uh, I'll wait for everything to, to cool off properly then I'll go around and just tidy up any excess glue which is bulged out I think this side could do with a, a little sand just on that edge just to bring that down a little bit to make it 100% stable but to be honest yeah, it's more fun if it's wobbly 
more chance to knock it over and uh, and get a penalty <laughs> or fired in that case I think wasn't it um, so that's our part rack set up there again I'll quickly go over the sizes for you again our sides were 8 inches and our racks were 9.5 inches we have for each of those, the um, rail supports there, they're centimeter squared, half inch squares, something like that's fine. And again, you need four spaces, which are one and three quarter inches. And four of those. So that's it. And that should take a full-size pallet quite happily there. I'll double check with the, uh, the Euro pallets, and there we go. So uh, what I'll do is I'll split this. Actually no, I won't split it, I'll just carry on. I've got some of these ready-made. I'll show you the principles of uh, the pallets whilst we're at it as well. So uh, this is one of the full-size pallets that I made myself. And basically Using the uh, the pallet supplied with the cast and Lindy itself, you don't really need to measure anything else. You can either make exact copies of that, or go ahead and make these yourself as well. Now the way I've done it, I don't have any uh, any room on the sides to go into, so it's just straight on that side. But to be honest, that's all you'll you'll going to need really. Um, it is a bit chunky but that's because I'll just use whatever I can pick up at uh, the local hardware store. Um, you can probably get thinner bits um, and actually alter the design quite a bit because uh, you can have, if that was a 3 mil uh, piece there, you'd be able to have the cross bracing on the bottom and then you'd use less of these centimeter squares and you could put a chunk in each bit and actually set up a proper part but as I said this works for me and, and it's quite simple to do so what I used was basically centimeter square um, lengths which were 2.4 or 2.2 meters, I can't remember quite exactly actually, there's no label uh, 2.4 meter lengths and yep, yeah, two sizes for the top parts is 6mm by 11mm and the square pieces aren't quite square, I think they were 10.5 mil by 11 and again that was a 2 meter length and this is just pine strip wood so I know this is a, not any of that size but just to, to show you roughly what I was doing um, I'll use this so for the Euro pallets that's underneath so we have the three strips there, which we don't have there, but all I did was lay this on a piece of wood and marked where the side was going to finish. And then you'd cut out that section, you need three of those, so you just basically carry on marking up the wood for your three and have them cut. Top again, basically the same. Um, carried on, actually, it was on a different size of wood, so again, it would have been started from the, the bottom of the wood and just marked off the size, moved up and marked off. So I worked out roughly 
uh, with the sizes of wood that I had, that four works pretty well to set up one of the Euro pallets. And six works well for the full pallets. <coughs> so, anyway, once I had all the pieces cut out, so I'll, I'll give you the, the actual size of the standard pallet so you can work roughly from what it was. That is. Two three eighth inches or six centimeters by three and five eight inches or nine nine point nine point four roughly centimeters on the diameter there. So uh, anyway, for the full parts. Basically, just making a square out of the actual size of that, so that would have been 9.3, 9.4 centimeters, the 3 and 5 eighths inches by 3 and 5 eighths inches, or the 9 point whatever, would make the full power size. Now I have some prepared here actually, I was, uh, still have these leftovers to do from the other day. Now, you can kind of roughly gauge by eye what's going to work. So if you set up the three square pieces at the bottom, Kind of get the midpoints, or just measure a midpoint, and give yourself a little indication there. What I did is I cheated because I have this palette and lined it up on the outside edges there, and then just tried to make sure it's kind of squared off on the end there. But, uh, yeah. Once you've got one, you can kind of get that to hold everything in place and you'll line it all up. Okay. So that's square enough for me. And as I said, there is six lengths on there. You could make less, you could try and squeeze in another one. But, uh, Six seems to work for me, so that's that's what I used. Um, it actually works in quite nicely with the length of wood as well, because you don't waste too much. Um, but you would need two lengths of the uh, six by elevens mill strips, and one length of the uh, ten and a half by eleven or. 10x10, 10 10, whatever. Whatever you can get your hands on, basically. So, just set it up so it looks kind of spaced out right. That's good for me. And I'm so, not using the hot glue this time, just a bit of. Uh, Super glue or super gel. It's just easier to know what I was doing there. And um, if you put a blob just at the ends down here, and get that first one in place. Once that's in, you can take away any supports you've been using. Let that set for a second whilst you work on the rest. Normally, I'll go for the, the top one just so we have each side secured. So 
So it does take a couple of seconds for this uh, super glue or super gel all this type of stuff to set so be careful not to uh, knock everything out of place whilst it's setting a little bit of pressure should help that as well okay and just make sure you've got everything kind of set where you want it so as, as long as it looks even to the eye then I wouldn't worry too much about things being a little bit off here and there but uh, Again, it depends on how accurate you want to be. If you want to get out your set squares and and rulers, go for it. It's, uh, whatever makes you happy. And whatever makes me happy is whatever works. Okay, so yep. Get dubs of glue up the whole thing. This so you get a couple of seconds before it starts really setting, so you can kind of maneuver each piece into place. If you put it down, or the glue's not quite in the right area, you can kind of move it about a little bit and get it even and spread into where you need it. Okay, maybe it's start to shape up quite nicely. Last one in. Okay. And then there we have it. One new belt. Um, and the cost of the strip with itself wasn't that much. It was about two pound a strip or something, one fifty to two pound a strip. So about six pounds. And out of the the three strips, I think I can make about uh, it's either six or eight of the um, the full size parts. Uh, or you can make a combination and I think you can get well, about four or five of those Euro pallets and a couple of uh, the uh, standard pallets out of again three lengths of the wood there. But, uh, simple to do, straightforward enough and uh, certainly worth trying yourself instead of trying to buy things online which I think you can buy from Carson, but uh, if it only takes a few minutes to get things set up, why not do it yourself? Okay, but uh, thanks for putting up with watching. Uh, hopefully it's useful to, to some people out there who are playing around with the Carson uh, forklifts. And as I said, there are probably other ways to, to make these pallets using, I think, 3mm instead of the 6mm you'd be able to put, uh, as I said, strips above and below and that would uh, that'd give you kind of a more realistic um, built palette having the cross beams on the bottom but, as I said, for me they work quite nicely I'm, uh, I'm happy enough with them Okay. Thanks, Nick. Bye.